What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Coke Gotti, coming at y'all with another video. In this video, we're going to give a recap of my week seven predictions. Before we start, hit that like, subscribe for me, and let's ride. Starting off, we had a Syracuse going up against North Carolina State. I chose North Carolina State to win the game. The game was closer than I thought it would be because Syracuse, for some reason, you know, they're just not living up to the hype everyone was giving them. I didn't really give them no hype, but people had them hype up just because of what they did last year. But North Carolina State won the game. Syracuse is just falling off, falling off from the little hype they was getting. Then we had number 20 ranked Virginia going in to play Miami. I chose Virginia to win the game. That didn't happen. It was a very close game, though. Very very good defense all game long from both teams. Miami, I was impressed with y'all's game. Seems like with the quarterback change, you guys are starting to make a make a make a move in the right step. And starting off with the Saturday games, we had the good old Red River rivalry. I chose Oklahoma to win it. <clears throat> I think originally. Before the season started, I had predicted Texas to win. But over the course of the season, of course, my prediction changed. Oklahoma's looking fucking amazing. I mean, of course, we know that when it comes to playoff time and all that stuff, their defense is going to really hurt them. But they're looking really good, you know. I've said it on my Facebook. I'll say it here on this video. Lincoln Riley is the best, the best offensive coach in the country, hands down. I don't care if it's fucking college. I don't care if it's NFL. I don't care where it is. Lincoln Riley's the best. This man has taken two years in a row, got the Heisman winner who went number one overall. This man gets Jalen Hurts from Bama. And at, at Bama, Jalen Hurts never once looked like a passing threat. This man goes to Oklahoma. Pfft. Lincoln Riley changes all of that instantly. Then... We had South Carolina going in to play number three ranked dogs, my dogs. Of course, I chose Georgia. I mean, most people in the world did. That didn't happen. We looked like shit. Like, offensive coaching was horrible. Offensive playing from the players was just horrible. And then you add in the fact that anything that could have went wrong, went wrong. Then throwing the fact South Carolina came to play. I give them the props. You know, to me, they're not. I don't respect their team. You know, they're trash in my eyes. But they came to play. I can't take nothing from them. They came to play. And we we made no offensive adjustments throughout the whole game. Everything we called, South Carolina knew what the fuck was going on automatically. Anyways, off that shit, man. Georgia lost, all right? I was wrong with that prediction. The number one Bama plays number 24 A&M. Chose Bama. We, we all probably did. Bama won pretty easily. Their defense looked a little suspect like it's looked all year. But in all actuality, most teams' defenses in the this season have been looking suspect. So that probably ain't going to hurt Bama at all. Then we have Michigan State against Wisconsin. I chose Michigan State to win the game. That didn't happen. 38-0. Wisconsin smashed their ass. I thought Michigan State's defense was going to be able to hold them and make it a ball game, but they couldn't, and Michigan State's offense couldn't even get nothing started. Then we had Washington State against Arizona State. I wanted to pick Washington State, but then I thought about it, and I'm always hyping Arizona State up as being the upset team. And then this season, after they when they first got ranked the first time, I went against them, thinking they wasn't going to hold on. And they won. That fucked up my damn YouTube prediction video. Gave me a loss. So this week, you know, I thought about it, I thought about it, and I had to pick them. They've been playing solid. They only got that one L. Washington State, I mean, Mike Leach is going to do what Mike Leach does with his teams, but that doesn't mean that they're an elite team. He has great offense. He's a great offensive mind. But Washington State is not one of those teams. They don't just reload or nothing, they also have never reached the top tier status, even in their own conference. So I rode with Arizona State, and Arizona State won the game. 
Then we had Florida State going to play number two Clemson. Well, formerly number two Clemson. <clears throat> I chose Clemson, of course. I ain't gonna lie. I thought Florida State was gonna give them a fight. Florida State had been on, <clears throat> they had coming off a win. Horner broke. I mean, I don't know what's going on in Florida State, to be honest, because they got the talent. They got talent there. They recruited a top talent every year. But they couldn't even put up a fight. Clemson slaughtered them. Then we had USC going to play number nine, Notre Dame. I chose Notre Dame. I figured Notre Dame was going to win by two scores or better. It was a lot closer than I thought it was. USC, USC's USC been looking good this year. They haven't been getting the wins, but they've been looking good on the field. They just haven't been able to win the games. I think USC might be coming back next season. Maybe next season they could really be a contender in the Pac-12. Then we had number 10, Penn State, playing number 17, Iowa. I chose Penn State to win the game. I was thinking I, uh, Penn State was going to be able to win this game pretty easily. But Iowa's defense was not going to go for that. They made it tough. But Penn State's defense stood up. Impressed me. I mean, Iowa is not known for having no offenses or putting up points or anything like that. So take it how you want. But Penn State's defense definitely looked good in that game. Penn State's coming for you, Ohio State. It's going it's going to be a good good end of the stretch out there in the Big 12. I promise you that much. Then last but not least, we had number seven, Florida, playing number five, LSU. I picked LSU. I said LSU would win by two scores. They did. They won by two touchdowns. And they looked good. They looked how they've been looking. Like, I, I'm not trying to hype up LSU too much. But they're just looking good. People talk about who have they played, who have they played. Well, for one, LSU has beaten two teams that are currently top 15, Texas and Florida. Both of them are currently, currently in the top 15. And any team that, that was ranked, they beat them, and now they're not ranked. No, these are two teams they beat that are currently in the top 15. And you can say, what defense has they played? Well, for one, Florida's got a defense. I don't give a damn what no one says. Florida's got a defense. And I hate Florida, but they got a defense. LSU, no matter who you put in front of them so far, their offense has been running smooth, like efficient. No mishaps, no nothing. You got Bama who might struggle a quarter against Duke, might struggle for a quarter against Ole Miss. You got Clemson that might struggle a whole game against North Carolina, you know? LSU, no matter whether it's a cupcake or whether it's a Power 5 team or a top 10 ranked team, top 15 ranked team, their offense ain't struggling, period. I'm I'm bought into the LSU hype. I believe LSU is a real contender. I believe Bama better watch out for LSU. I believe that it's going to come down November 9th. That game is going to decide the West. I really do. LSU is a legit contender in my eyes. When they play Bama, I feel like it'll be a shootout. Honestly, I don't feel like Bama's defense is going to be able to hold LSU. I don't feel like LSU's defense is going to be able to hold Bama. I feel like it'll be a shootout. We'll find out in the next four weeks, though. They'll be playing very soon. I could be wrong. Bama might just shut them out, you know, beat the shit out of them. But right now, I'm buying the LSU hype. But that's the recap. I went 8-3 and three this week. Pretty fucking good, I must say so myself. Especially since the last two weeks, I was barely over 500 or right underneath 500. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe button, though. I'll be dropping my video my next week prediction, predictions <clears throat> in the next couple of days. And I'll be having some more uh, mid-season uh, grades for some teams. It's your boy, Colt Gotti, and I'm out. Boom.